Um, this is talk basically to summarise a bit about my experience in my last role. I just spent over two years in a role as a developer advocate. Um, when I say developer advocate, I've learnt just from speaking to a few people already that not everyone knows what that is. Um, so when I say developer advocate, I basically mean the same kind of role as you might have heard it as developer evangelist or developer relations. Um, and I worked at Samsung in Samsung's web browser team. Um, and basically being a developer advocate there was about being a bridge between Samsung's engineering efforts on the browser and their web APIs and their web platform and web developers on the outside world and being a two-way bridge, so helping to spread information out to web developers and helping to gather their feedback in and, and give them to our colleagues too. Um, and I thought I'd share a bit about that experience for anyone just intrigued about this kind of role, um, and especially if anyone had an idea um, if you were considering it as a future career option. So, firstly, uh, before we get really started with my 10 lessons, um, you may have heard, if you are aware of this developer advocate role, this is the kind of stereotype you might have heard about it, that uh, web developer advocates, developer advocates are always jetting off on exotic trips, um, they're always acting like uh, rock star engineers, uh, you know, up on stage and things, and they're always partying, they're at conferences and meetups and then they're partying the night away afterwards. Um, and like all stereotypes, there is an element of truth to that. Um, but it's not exactly like that. It's a little bit more like this. Um, for me, most of my time was spent on a computer responding to questions from developers, for example, writing tech docs, um, writing blog posts, uh, making demos, web de demos. Um, there is quite a lot of travelling. Um, I guess it depends a bit on the role. Um, not, it's not always super glamorous. Um, and of course there's still time in the office, at meetings and things like that. Okay, so what did I learn in my time there? Firstly, this may vary a little bit from company to company and industry to industry, but there's a lot of freedom in this kind of role. There's freedom to explore what you think is going to be useful to, to share knowledge with other developers. Um, to explore the kind of things you're interested in, to make demos that you have ideas for. Um, I was also encouraged to get involved with web standards too. Um, so that's really neat. Uh, on the flip side, that does mean that you'll need to set your own direction quite a lot. Um, you'll need to motivate yourself and um, be disciplined to keep good habits, make sure that you are um, keeping going. Um, you'll have times when you've being busy at events and you come back and then you have to keep picking yourself up to do new things and to get ready for the next event. And one thing I learned is that unlike a little bit different to being uh, in a normal developer role, nothing's ever really done. I mean, nothing's ever really done in development either because there's always going to be new things to do and, and uh, bugs and things that come about. But in this role, it's hard to have times when you kind of think, oh, OK, that's a project that's kind of complete or, or a feature that's done and move on to something else. You have events that are done, um, but you have to be quite careful, I think, to remember to celebrate those successes and to have some regular catch-up times where you look back at what you've done and look at what's going on in the future. Otherwise, you can just kind of have it all blur into one. Um, and it can be easy to take on a bit too much. Um, for example, going to too many events. I know lots of developer, developer advocates who have, I just don't understand how they could have such a schedule where they're jetting from one place to the other to the other, um, you know, speaking at three different places in one and a half days and things like that. Um, I should say that it's a role that you don't necessarily have to do full time. There are people in developer jobs who do this kind of stuff, kind of on the side or as part of their job. Um, so there are developers who write blog posts and go and give talks and things like that. Um, so you can start off that way, and if you find it that you love it so much that you want to do it full time, then you might prefer to ramp it up that way. For me, uh, I really enjoyed it for a couple of years, but I realised that for me it was a bit like donuts. 
Donuts are great as a snack on the side, but you don't want to just eat donuts the whole time. Maybe you want to have a meal with like a donut on the side as well. Um, and burnout does affect a lot of developer advocates. Um, I've seen people um, who are in a similar role and they've just crashed out for a while after just doing too much, taking on too much, going to too many events. So one thing I learned is that it's really important to set yourself goals that stretch yourself a little bit in a good way to keep yourself motivated and improving and doing more and doing better, but not so much that you burn out. Um, and I think that helps to you to have a good mindset and keep on going. Uh, I also learned that mental health issues affect many more people than I had expected. Um, and it's once you get to know people and you start mm -hmm. speaking um, with them really about this that you learn that there's a lot of people who have issues with anxiety, for example, um, and even people who are developer advocates who you kind of have this, imagine, you would imagine that they're quite confident people um, and you know, they're probably super extroverts, but that's often not the case. Um, I think most developer advocates that I know are of a complicated mix of introvert and extrovert, and they're kind of a bit extroverted in some situations, but not in others. I know also a lot of people who find it easier to be on stage and give a talk because that's kind of structured and they are able to kind of control that a bit more and prepare for that experience than they would find it just having an unstructured conversation with people. Um, and I think that from my small sample size, possibly developer advocates may have more of these kind of issues than population average. And I think part of that may be because it is quite sort of anxiety-inducing to keep putting yourself out there in front of people, whether it's online, on social media, in blog posts, or up on stage. Um, every time you do that, you, you are opening up yourself to criticism, to people not liking what you've said. Um, will people like it? There's always that pressure. And at some point, you'll surely get trolled. Um, this only happened to me a couple of times, to be fair. Um, I'm sure that other people have this a lot more, um, whether they're people who are um, high profile or especially people from minority groups. I'm sure they have this a lot worse than I had. Um, but I did have this both on social media a bit. Uh, I was called a Marxist at one point, and people were saying they were never going to buy the products from the company I worked at anymore because of me and things like that. Um, and also, uh, in person as well, I've had people um, rant at me from when I was up on stage giving a talk and storm out and things like that. So these things do happen. Um, I think that you have to put it out of your mind as quickly as you can. Um, maybe talk to friends about it though. And I know this, people have told me this, but yes, it is really good, I think, not to feed the trolls um, and just to kind of diffuse the situation and just move on because it's not worth it. Um, you also get judged maybe even more than usual uh, on your social media follow account and those kind of metrics. Um, some people in the industry use it as a proxy to assess your level of influence, to assess your worth as a developer advocate. Um, thankfully, not, not most people, and if uh, working in a great team, there was none of that for us, um, but not in our team, but sometimes you'll get it from conference organizers, for example, and they'll be um, trying to uh, assess who should be giving a keynote from, from just looking at your Twitter profile, for example. Um, and also, if you are a bit of a social media addict already, then it could be kind of a bit of a dangerous role to just keep uh, getting you addicted to that social media engagement. Back to some good things about it, though. It's really great for meeting lots of cool people. Um, got to work with amazing colleagues who are creative and enthusiastic. Um, I miss them already. Uh, it's also good for meeting the tech celebs who are around at some of these events that you go to, and most of the time they are really nice and they're real people. It's also great for seeking opportunities to collaborate with such people, um, for example, on demos or co-speaking at conferences. I really recommend, if you do this kind of role, 
seeking as much as possible to co-speak with other people because it's much nicer to travel to places with other people than just on your own. A career is a long time, so and a change is as good as a rest. So I'm really pleased that I did this role, even though it ended up being for two and a bit years, and now I've gone back to being a developer again. Um, I don't have any regrets, though, and I think it was great to try different things and get different kinds of experience. And finally, the web needs more voices. Um, I was a web developer advocate, so this bit is kind of specific to the web. Um, but the web needs voices both within the web standards community and communicating out from those web standards communities out to the, the web developers in the wider world. Um, we don't want the web to be too centered around one particular internet company. We don't want the web to be too centered around one kind of type of people that we want to have, make sure that there's really much better representation for minority groups. So maybe not right now, uh, but maybe in the future, maybe that might be some of you. Um, if I haven't put you off from this role, I uh, hope that you will have a think about developer advocacy and whether it suits you. I've included a link to a blog post that I wrote about the developer relations lifestyle um, and that's pretty much it thank you very much